Welcome back to the DCS Sip Rip. I'm your host, Prickly Hedgehog, and this is the weekly news show where we discuss news and information about the world's premier combat flight simulator for the home PC. It's called DCS World, and it's produced by Eagle Dynamics. Let's take a little look around the community this week as we take a rest between big patches and charge towards the end of the first quarter of 2024 and the remote possibility of some sort of module being introduced to DCS World this quarter. Last week, ED brought to our attention an overview of some complex tweaking that they've been working on to unlock GPU performance for both AMD and NVIDIA graphics cards. They explained that as DCS maps have increased in quality, detail, realism, and complexity over the years, it's been a challenge to balance this with maintaining a decent level of performance. With the most recent and upcoming maps, they have raised the bar to provide a better balance, they say. This has led them to rethink their approach to terrain scenery computing, instancing, and streaming. Their task was to create a flexible system focused on utilizing and saturating an increasing number of compute cores in modern GPUs. They went on to say that the new scenery compute system achieved their ambitious goals of increased GPU performance, improved VRAM management, increased CPU performance, and finally improved streaming from storage disk to VRAM with optimized CPU usage. And finally, they stated their tests indicate a notable performance increase in densely built up scenes depending on graphic settings and hardware, and they ask you to provide them with feedback on your enhanced DCS performance they're looking forward to the feedback. Now they provided us with a couple of graphs of some of their test results with two different graphics cards which illustrate improved response times. As they point out, individual results are going to vary depending on your system. So the graphs themselves, in fairness, they are a little bit meaningless to the average person running the game. However, they represent, I suspect, basically the Reader's Digest version of a heck of a lot of work to unlock GPU and CPU power. And the benchmark listed is not necessarily an apples to apples correlation to any end user's rig, which again is why they're understandably looking for feedback from the community to help validate the gains. If, as ED described, they have been able to saturate more cores in processing highly detailed scenes, then in theory we should see the proverbial performance boost players are looking for, that is good frame rates while still being able to enjoy the stunning visual scenery. And that is something that DCS is renowned for at the moment, and there's more to come if Vulkan API unlocks more access for developers than what DirectX 11 is generally able to do. Good one. Station time, station time, five minutes to push, push it up, reference point eight five. So there's probably a couple of questions that stem from this announcement, and that is what is core saturation and why do you want to do that? Well, this is in very simple terms, and I'm not an expert in this area, but it's important to remind ourselves of what modern GPUs do and how they function. Remember, they now boast thousands of cores, and what makes them unique is their ability to process a massive number of calculations in parallel such as doing things like graphical renderings, data mining, and even AI learning, which is why you hear this uh, term come up with the latest NVIDIA cards, this AI concept, ray tracing, etc. They also house their own dedicated VRAM, frees up resources from the main motherboard RAM, and CPU caching, etc., etc., for the dedicated tasks of processes that are being demanded of the graphics card. So in general terms, that is generating images, 3D images that we see in game, which can be taxing. Now, again, in simple terms, if ED are able to increase the access to more processes and cores that the game is able to use in these higher end graphics cards available today, then we should see effectively more efficiency in the way the game engine runs. And as you saw, there is a degree of symbiosis with all of this as they describe the optimization of the CPU and the VRAM, etc. So it's not uh, a detailed explanation, but that's what we're 
basically doing, unlocking more of those thousands of cores that a GPU has available to it in order to render those complex and detailed scenes that we see in DCS world, which can cause some hitches, if you like, in terms of frame rates and overall performance. Of course, frame rates can be a little bit of a trap in their own right. I could certainly scale down all of the graphical excitement and still get very, very high FPS, but the game looks crappy. So it's always a compromise and a balance between, again, high detail and frame rates, which we as end consumers generally regard as performance. So personally, I believe I saw a boost in performance in the last patch, which also coincided, remember, with some driver updates from NVIDIA. And for VR users like myself, who use the Pimax Crystal system, that also received some updates, including firmware and software updates, which were highly beneficial. By the same token, unfortunately, some users did not reap benefits, and there were some of you in the community that expressed some feedback of a negative kind, indicating more stutters, and indeed some systems actually not working at all. And I think there was, uh, was it the Reverb 3? Somebody was saying that that was completely balked after this last update, and I believe that ED is working on a fix for that. So uh, again, as I said before, with all of the varying systems out there and ED acknowledges, there's going to be some variations in the performance theme. There's a lot of variability with thousands of users and their permutations of systems, hardware and software. So not everyone, unfortunately, is going to get the same results and unpacking and, you know, going through the troubleshooting of that is a tricky thing. So um, sorry if you were one of the people that did not reap any benefit out of this last patch and certainly any of the other uh, updates that occurred. Make three intermittent contacts nose 10 miles altitude unknown make three estimate 6,000. Now, to that end, I happen to see also a video pop into my feed talking about Process Lasso. Uh, this is an independent program which allows for more precise control of the way in which Windows prioritizes demanding tasks, like running DCS World, for example. The video I watched was from a guy called Flight Sim Fan, and I'll put a link to the description below to that video and a link to the Process Lasso program as well. It's a very interesting one. And by coincidence, Spudknocker must have similar feeds to me in the YouTube Flight Sim genre algorithm rhythms as he too ended up producing a short video on how to use process lasso uh, along with a prior video on disabling Windows scan securities to boost frame rates which he was struggling with after putting together a new PC. I'll let you make up your own mind about what kinds of risks or rewards there are in tampering with security protocols in Windows. As for process lasso this is a free program with some limited functionality in its free version form. You can buy a monthly subscription or a lifetime license for about 40 bucks. It's too early for me to give any sort of real knowledgeable feedback on that system. Uh, Spud's video to me, while it was interesting to watch and it demonstrated how to boost performance, uh, there was nothing really wrong with it, but I feel there is still some really complex mechanisms for unlocking the power of the computer. But the caveat is it probably helps to know exactly what you're doing. There are a lot of videos out there, and I suspect this might be something VR users will be interested in, and certainly many other DCS users as well. Now, if you're not au fait with all of this tweaking and manipulation of your expensive hardware that you've invested in, you don't want to balk anything, well, remember that for most users, Windows 11 does a fairly decent job of prioritizing resources for gaming. Let me know in the comment section below if you've tried out any of these programs or have any experience with this and what kind of benefits you've seen or if you have any other words of wisdom in this area. Uh, but it is quite a rabbit hole to, to go down. I am a member of a, um, a Discord group as well that talks a lot about VR. This program had come up as a discussion and some possible settings uh, to, to do it. Uh, it's relatively straightforward. And generally speaking, like I said, I, I did see a little bit of a boost in performance in terms of prioritizing resources for DCS World. So anything that does that is going to be helpful. But again, I think there's more to these kinds of programs than just uh, clicking buttons and randomly uh, hoping things are going to work. And there is a possibility of maybe getting negative results as well, like in all things involving computers. Make four, bandit zero four zero twenty, estimate six thousand, make four. Now, other aspects of last week's newsletter centered on the promotion of the user files section of the ED website, which many of you know contains thousands of files ranging from sound mods to aircraft skins and everything in between. There are a ton of really good missions which can be great for training purposes and I actually pulled one down for some F-15E stuff that I was doing. I wanted to get some training in on that aircraft and that means you don't have to set up your own missions if you're not comfortable generating them in the mission editor which can be tricky from time to time. ED also promoted on that basis those of you who create campaigns or missions to reach out to them if you have a campaign or a working mission set uh, that could potentially earn yourself some money if it's polished enough basically. For, for some talented people out there 
these user-generated missions are something of more than just a hobby. And ED advice, if that's you and you have the ability to create highly detailed scenarios with the knowledge of military practices, professional voice acting, uh, and an enticing narrative structure, you may be able to turn that hobby into something of a money earner for you as an official third-party campaign developer. So I know there are a lot of groups out there and people that are producing very high quality content and I have actually lent my voice to at least one campaign in development at this uh, juncture as well to assist in that. So maybe that's something you're interested in. If so, reach out to ED. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. But as I said, you do need to have uh, certain boxes checked before they'll uh, take you on board. Uh, good luck to you if that's something that you're interested in. Three coming in broken, say again. Copy, MiG-3, with us break lock, target the strike of 08040, 21,000 MiG-3. Now, in this week's newsletter, ED plug third-party developer Octopus G, who have been diligently working on the LA-7, as many of you are aware. We've seen a few videos of the aircraft in-game in the last year as well, as the team showcased the work they've been doing on the aircraft. ED advised that the LA-7 by the team is making great progress. The development of the LA-7 flight model is now complete. That's a huge milestone. And the assembly and preparation of the necessary documentation for certification is in progress. Unique features have been implemented like the decrease in lifting force when the side cowl flaps are fully opened due to the deterioration of the aerodynamics of the wing route. An armament system has been completed that includes a bomb aiming control system and a wide collection of liveries are also being prepared that will continue to expand on after the release of the aircraft. The damage model is complete, a quick manual has been written and 2D for the GUI art has been created. The product is now being finalized for early access so stay tuned for the planned launch date. So that last statement is Obviously great news for the team, and I think this module, along with several others in the pipeline, bodes good news for the community in general. What will be tricky, though, for ED, as I've said in the past, is managing the release of the various modules on track for being finished in 2024. Unlike the core saturation, which we talked about before, which is something that we want, module saturation, from a business point of view, is not good news for ED or the third-party developers looking to maximize sales. To put it in perspective, the modules hovering in the wings include things like several maps, such as the Kola map, Top End Australia, ED's Afghanistan map and the Iraq map, uh, and also the World War II Marianas add-on as well. We also have the Kiowa in testing right now. We're still awaiting the Phantom 2, the Corsair, and there's a host of others we're waiting for more updates on, including but not limited to things like the Chinook, the MiG-29, the MiG-23, and various other DLC uh, AI assets in the wings as well. Really, it's a rich pipeline right now, and certain modules like the Phantom 2 are naturally going to attract the lion's share of community dollars, to be fair, because of their popularity. So it's going to be very interesting to see which modules get released first this year. Uh, it's anyone's game and it's anyone's bet. I put a bet on the Phantom 2 being released in quarter one, uh, but we're rapidly running out of time. So as a result of that, I'm probably going to end up giving away two Phantoms in punishment, one for uh, not being right and one for having to add an extra one in for the next quarter when it maybe is released. We'll see what happens. This could be an expensive year. Anyway, while we wait for these exciting and enticing modules, ED announced this week a big spring sale. As many of you know by now, it's not really necessary to buy modules at full price if you pay attention to early access offers and the regularly advertised sales. So right now, through to the 24th of March, you can pick up discounts of up to 50% off selected items. There are some modules not on sale, such as the F-15E though, uh, as these are new in some of the newer campaigns. So if you're looking to save money on those goodies that are in the eShop, do check that out. Don't miss out. Also, uh, VR is a thing for me right now. And if you're looking to save money on the Pimax VR headset, the crystal that I've been using over the last month and a half, use discount code PRICKLYHEDGEHOG72 in the Pimax store for $50 off and start your VR journey in DCS world. Uh, personally, it's becoming the only way for me to enjoy DCS. Uh, and there'll be more on my experiences with VR and the Pimax crystal, which is coming soon. I have a script written already. I just got to record it and I just haven't had time. Sorry, Pimax. I'm a busy man these days, along with some other goodies I'm working on as well. The list of projects never ends. All right, in terms of other news and to wrap up things, well, things are generally pretty quiet right now on releasable information. As we build up, as I said before, to an exciting 2024, 
We didn't see last week another heat blur video on the Phantom 2, which I was uh, kind of surprised at, as I had hoped we would see one. As far as I can tell, I haven't seen too much official information from other module makers regarding announcements, uh, Octopus G being an exception to that because they produced a video too that I didn't plug earlier, but um, I'll try and remember to put a link in the description below for that. That was about the bombing that was in the ED newsletter. This isn't to say, of course, that the teams like heat blur et al aren't busy behind the scenes as we know uh, some of you may have noticed andre celeste's uh, video from hip games mentioning the Eurofighter project being a priority for heat blur uh, i think in fairness it was a fair point that they mentioned that they were going to be working on the Eurofighter. that was kind of a given but i think to be fair it's a project that's going to come after the release of the Phantom 2, right? So that's their top priority right now, or their number one project. Now, I did see a really inter interesting interview with the team and the main developers from Heat Blur, in which they explained why the A6 AI variant is an in-game, and that was apparently caused by events in Ukraine, in which data they had in the cloud was being basically locked out. They couldn't get hold of it. So the employees that they had there that were working on the A6 lost the data, essentially. So they're having to start again. Remember, it was meant to be released last summer. Well, you know, as they've indicated several times now in various interviews uh, circumstances beyond their control has impeded a little bit a lot of the work that they've done and it's incredible how much work they have achieved regardless of those particular circumstances so their team is wide and varied across uh, uh, I think multiple continents and numerous countries they've done an amazing job of what we've seen at the Phantom 2 so stay tuned for more on that uh, in that interview the team talked about their backgrounds and design philosophies and it can't be ignored the ingenuity and originality that they've put into their modules thus far including things like the AI Jester which has been a really interesting injection of, of AI into DCS world, but I think also some of the other features that have come with modules like the F-14 and what they are planning for the Phantom 2 with the ground crew stuff, the ability to customize your pilot. So they've taken, they said, aspects from other games and tried to inject these into DCS world as well, which I think is very clever. And it does make them, I think, one of the leading third-party developers in the game right now. In fact, I think they rival ED and some of the stuff that they do, without doubt. They're very, very clever, very, very ingenious, um, very energetic, and I'm looking forward to seeing the Phantom in game, and I hope you agree with me. Make three copies of that in these RTB. Showtime kill. Make two's nose for 10 miles, 42,000 uh, westbound. Good up kill. Let's wrap it up. It's a very, very, very exciting time to be involved in DCS World right now, and 2024 is going to be a bumper year. Uh, I think we're in for a packed amount of content this year so stick around for more news by subscribing liking commenting and sharing thank you to those of you who like to give me a little bit more support with the super thanks button that really helps this channel keep afloat so that will do for this week stay tuned for more content on dcs world and we'll see you next time on the dcs sit rep next push it up check pitch time is on commit reference 75